Mr. Sho, I'd like to direct your attention to the screen for a short video, if you don't mind. Okay. Mr. Sho, that video was posted 41 days ago. As you can see, it is captioned me as F at the House Energy and Commerce Committee on March 23rd of this year. This video was posted before this hearing was publicly noticed. I think that's a very interesting point to raise. But more concerning is the fact that it names this chairwoman by name. Your own community guidelines state that you have a firm stance against enabling violence on or off TikTok. We do not allow people to use our platform to threaten or incite violence or to promote violent extremist organizations, individuals, or acts. When there is a threat to public safety or an account is used to promote or glorify off-platform violence, we ban the account. This video has been up for 41 days. It is a direct threat to the chairwoman of this committee, the people in this room, and yet it still remains on the platform. And you expect us to believe that you are capable of maintaining the data security, privacy and security of 150 million Americans where you can't even protect the people in this room? I think that is a blatant display of how vulnerable people who use TikTok are. You couldn't take action after 41 days when a clear threat, a very violent threat to the chairwoman of this committee and the members of this committee was posted on your platform. Okay. Okay. You damn well know that you cannot protect the data and security of this committee or the 150 million users of your app because it is an oh, extension God. of the CCP. And with that, I yield back. Can I respond? What a dis... Yeah? No, we're going to move on. This just makes them look stupid. I, I think that she... I, I think that... Like, somehow she's managed to make the CEO of TikTok not the craziest person in the room. Uh, I, I think that this question is, is is silly in a number of ways. I think that it does have one good point to it, however. Is that her basically saying that because there are things that break your rules on the platform, that means that you cannot moderate your platform. Like, they, they cannot moderate their platform in an effective way it, with any sort of like due diligence or uh like what's what's the word for it like a fuck why, why am i drawing a blank on this uh with any sort of like due diligence or uh due process and it's not being done in a timely manner something like that should not exist on tiktok and i think that the guy this guy would agree with this now i am not a I don't know if TikTok should be banned in the U.S. or not, because I actually I, I let me let me actually just step back for a second. I'll get to that. So, number one, you look at this right here. It's got four hundred and seventy five likes. Usually interactions on TikTok versus views are about five to one to ten to one, somewhere around there. And it could be more. So this video had equivalent of two thousand five hundred views. Or up to 5,000. Like, there's no way it had more than 100,000 views. Realistically, this is a drop in the ocean. Of course, nobody is going to see this video unless it gets reported. The problem with TikTok system and a lot of social media systems is that all of the... Like, they do have um, algorithms, right? So, like, if somebody types XYZ, this could potentially get them uh, in trouble with TikTok. It's like an auto-ban or, like, an auto-flag feature. Like, for example, that's why you see these girls where they, they'll type only fans, but it'll be like, oh, and, it, bro, it'll, it'll, it'll be like it's like a 14-year-old in, like, 2004 typing with numbers. Like, these girls are channeling their inner 2004 elite speak to type out only fans in a way that won't get auto detected by the Instagram filter. Yeah, it's so fucking caught. Yeah, it's an Xbox gamer tag. And and this happens because it automatically detects those words and then suppresses that language and it suppresses those posts. So outside of those types of algorithms, all of social media uh, moderation is done uh, reactively. 
it's done after somebody reports something. It's not like you have TikTok moderators that are just going through every single new video that gets posted. And the reason why is because it would be literally impossible to do that. And I think it does, and, and this is the point of what she's saying that I think is actually valid, and it's something that's worth discussing, which is whenever you are dealing with data that is so large and so immense that you literally cannot manage and maintain all of it, are you doing a disservice by the pub to the public by providing a platform to present information that could be uh, libelous, uh, slanderous, uh, incite violence or could be incredibly damaging because like TikTok, uh, for example, like there's a lot of uh, this is a big problem with their live streaming is that there's a lot of young girls and girls that are under 18 that are dancing and doing things that are sexual on their live streaming service. And then guys are giving them money with coded language. We watched an entire video about this with Upper Echelon Gamers when he did like a whole deep dive into the situation. This is a huge problem. So even if you don't care about slander and libel, I think that we can all agree that, you know, 13 year olds doing this on TikTok for grown men for tips and stuff, this is disgusting and it shouldn't happen. Uh, I do think that at a certain point, the betterment and the best interest of society does take precedence over uh, what a company can and can't do legally and can and can't do in terms of their like First Amendment because it can pose a threat to other people. So whenever you, you have a platform and you have rampant, uh, you know, like, let's say it, it's CP. That's what it is. You have rampant CP on the platform. You have rampant calls to self-harm. You have calls to violence. You have all of these things on the platform. There is absolutely a conversation to be had as to whether this is worth having. Absolutely. And the worst part about it is that that conversation is being completely fucking eclipsed by this Dumbo. This Dumbo right here is spending all this time trying to catch him in these little tricks. And anybody who knows anything about social media knows that a post like this, it, it, they're not going to ban every single one of them. So, like, she would have a point if, for example, this post was reviewed by TikTok and TikTok said that it was okay. But the truth is that TikTok probably never even saw this because nobody reported it. You see what I'm saying? The whole hearing was a gotcha moment. It's insane. Exactly. So let's also talk a little bit. So anyway, yeah, actually, I'll just go through the clips, okay? And I'll, I'll say with this clip, I think that she completely makes herself look like a fucking moron. Uh, she somehow, again, uh, makes the, uh, the CEO of TikTok... Uh, a, a company that I do think profits at the expense of Americans in a lot of ways. However, those ways are not exclusive to TikTok. It's just that TikTok has the largest percentage of a younger audience, so it's perceived as the worst. But the truth is that this same stuff is on Facebook, it's on Twitter, it's on Instagram, and it's on YouTube. It's all over the fucking platforms. Because people post it and there's no curation process before the data is posted. And there is no curation process by design because of the fucking, uh, it's the safe harbor laws and the DMCA laws because it's a, it's a platform, not a publisher. And the nature of being a platform is that there is no barrier to entry with publishing information. So if they did... Uh, if they did do that, like number one, like the company, the, the, the platform could not exist. It could not functionally exist. And, and number two, they would lose that protection. Do you see kind of what I'm saying? Being controlled by the CCC is enough reason to ban it. I understand that you think that. And I, I okay, that's fine. How many other platforms are controlled by external interests why is the ccp unique in it being some sort of malevolent force is the ccp the only malevolent force in the world obviously not so how many of these other social networks and other social platforms and things that operate as social platforms how many of them are also being held by potentially malevolent third-party interests or international interests do you see kind of what i'm saying 
because CCP and Russia are our current enemies. Yeah, and, and also, if you want to make the argument that TikTok is bad because TikTok is owned by a Chinese company and Chinese companies report directly to China, that's fine. Okay, that's all right. All right, so that, that's, that's, that's your argument. Ban League, ban Valorant, ban any game that's majority owned by uh, Tencent, and, and then we will have a conversation. Because right now, all this seems like to me is more scaremongering about how bad TikTok is by some probably fucking soccer mom who's worried that her, her, her daughter is getting eating disorders because of fucking TikTok. But the truth is, it's because she probably doesn't pay attention to her own kid. It's not TikTok's fault. Your kid is fucked up in the head. Maybe TikTok made it a little bit worse, but the majority is probably your fucking fault as a parent. That's what I think. I'll get off my soapbox now. But this is my overall analysis of this situation. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree or what? Valorant isn't stealing your SSN. I have made a TikTok account. I did not have to put my social security number into my TikTok account. I mean, like, that's not... Like, yeah, that that's just... That's not fair. Uh, TikTok bad. Yeah, same debate as with Facebook, MySpace. Yeah, exactly. Only this time they have CCP. Yeah, and again... This is so ignorant, it's crazy. Oh, is this somebody who disagrees? Let's let's make sure. Find ban them, but let's do TikTok first. I am not interested in a unilateral banning of TikTok because it's owned by China whenever we have so many other com uh, uh, other platforms that are also owned by China as well. I will not respect a... um. What's the word? Uh, I always forget like what words are uh, like like selective. I will not s support selective banning of something like TikTok whenever the problem is uniform. Yeah, this is a cherry picked problem for TikTok. But the truth is that if you acknowledge this is a problem, you acknowledge that many companies, many multi-billion dollar companies have this exact same problem. Why are we not talking about them? I think that TikTok is the only one that's being talked about a lot. Because number one, they probably are talking about these other things to an extent, but it's not as salacious as TikTok because people don't know about the other things, so it doesn't get as much media coverage. And also it's because TikTok is very popular. Yeah, it's the most successful. So yeah, let's go back and uh, have other companies accuse journalists GPS uh, info to track them down. Have other companies access journalists GPS info to track them down. Has a company have has another social media company ever accessed a journalist GPS information to track them down? Yeah, absolutely. I think that they did that even with the uh, what do you call it? Uh, with some of the people that got kidnapped by ISIS. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I remember whenever this happened. It was like five years ago, six years ago. Sure. Let's go to the next one. next jenny gentle lady yields back chair recognizes the gentleman from florida mr bill rockus for five years, five minutes thank you madam chair i appreciate it very much thanks for holding this hearing mr chu your algorithms have prioritized providing harmful contact directly to children like self-harm challenge that's just it's again this is not a substantial statement like have prioritized, uh, prioritized over what? I'm not even disagreeing with this, but I am very upset to see people that are in governmental positions making statements like this that are completely fucking baseless. Do you see what I'm saying? Even if it's true, you can, like, if somebody puts on a blindfold and they take a machine gun and they shoot at a target, and they get one in the bullseye, is it because they, they have fucking x-ray vision? No. Just ...and even suicide. Okay, Just three days ago, Italy opened an investigation into the TikTok over user safety concerns after the so-called French scar challenge went viral on your platform. I know you know about the blackout challenge which others may know as the choking 
challenge okay. that encourages children to bring them to the point of unconsciousness or in some cases, tragically, death. If that, uh, if that isn't enough, I want to share the story of Chase Nasca, oh, fuck. a 16 I guarantee you this is just going to be some fucking thing that he's doing. He's just saying this to make it... This is just... I, I... What annoys me about this is that like, I think this is a real problem, and it, it like, I, 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 I agree with a lot of what he's saying. But it's like, whenever you see somebody who you agree with, who's, like, making your argument in the worst way possible. And it's being done in such a bad way that it will become ineffective. Oh, boy, from New York, who tragically ended his life. A year ago by stepping in front of a train okay i want to thank his parents again they are here i want to thank his parents for being here today and allowing us to show this mr chu your can company i show this is, is this some sort of a thing it is oh, okay okay never mind there's not going to be like some him standing in front of a train i i find this to be ridiculous that the uh TikTok is the uh, the reason why the kid killed himself you know, like, maybe it made it worse, yeah, but, like, where were the fucking parents? You think this just randomly happens? Like, get the fuck out of here. Destroyed their lives. Your company destroyed their lives. I admire their courage to be here and share Chase's story in the hopes that it will prevent this from happening to other families. The content... And Chase's For You page was not a window to discovery, as you boldly claimed in your testimony. It wasn't content from I think this is actually a strong argument that this guy is making. That the For You page, which is curated and sent to individuals that are using the platform and it's being curated through uh you know their their previous likes uh cookies the algorithm of like oh a lot of people that watch this watch something else i think this is actually an extremely strong argument creator that you invited to roam the hill today or stem education content that children in china see instead his For You page was sadly a window to discover suicide. It is unacceptable, sir, that even after knowing all these dangers, you still claim TikTok is something grand to behold. I want you to see what Chase would see. And I think if you want, uh, again, would you share this content with your children, with your two children? Would you want them to see this? And again, I, I want to warn everyone watching that you may. Is, is this uh, is this bad? Can I watch this or what? It's fine. OK. I find this content disturbing, but we need to watch this, please. Larry, it's up. You got to kill yourself. A word. <laughs> Like right now? And then I'm gonna put a shotgun in my mouth and blow the brains out of the back of my head. Cool. This is a cute story. My brother, who is addicted to painkillers, blew his head off on the State Street Bridge. Bam! Now hold on, it gets better. No letter. No goodbye. Nothing. Got a question. If I died, would you miss me? Mr. Chu. I think a lot of that is uh, like dark irony. Uh, I don't really think a lot of those things are directly uh, encouraging suicide. I mean, if you if you read them at face value, yes. Um, but I, I think that most of it is, is it's it's. It's dark irony. Mr. Chu, please. Your technology. Yeah, it, it's, it's taken. Yeah, it's an edit. It's taken out of context. Is literally leading to death. Mr. Chu, yes or no? 
do you have full responsibility for your algorithms used by TikTok to prioritize content to its users? Yes or no, please. Uh, Congressman, I'll, I'll just like to, if respectfully, if you don't mind, I'll just like to start by saying it's devastating to hear about the news of, yes, a, as a yes, father myself, this is sir, tragic. yes or no. I'll repeat the question. Do you have full responsibility? This is a good question by uh, Mr. Uh, Bill Rackass right here. This is actually a good question of him to ask. Over the algorithms used by TikTok to prioritize content to its users. Yes or no, please. Uh, Congressman, we, we do take these issues very yeah, seriously. Yeah, yes or no. And we do provide resources for anyone who types in anything that is Sir, that is suicide yes or no. I see you're not willing to answer the question or take any responsibility for your parents' companies, the technology, and the harms it creates. It's just very, very sad. Very sad. It's very don't, sad. This don't, is why don't tell me you're going to move on, you fucking idiot. Congress needs to enact. Oh, my a fucking God. What did it go? Oh my fucking god. You literally have him on the ropes. He's going into some fucking pre-prepared three, three sentence statement because he knows that he's wrong. And you just fucking move on? Does it matter? He would never answer? Oh, I, I guarantee you, if somebody else was up there, they'd get him to... You think Ted Cruz would get him to fucking answer? I bet that had happened. If Elizabeth Warren was up there, I bet he'd fucking answer then. I don't want to hear this shit. If Bernie Sanders was up there, I bet he'd get him to answer. Absolutely. Get the fuck out of here. This is a joke. Comprehensive privacy and data security law to give Americans more minutes. control over their information and to protect our children. If he only had five minutes, he should have structured his question better and not go and, and tell some fucking annoying story about some kid that killed himself. Probably had nothing to do with TikTok. Probably TikTok was like 10%, 20% of why this kid kills himself. And, and then spend half your fucking time doing that. And, and then it doesn't work out. It's just, it's so stupid. These people are so fucking dumb. Children. We must save our children from big tech companies like yours who continue to abuse and manipulate them What's the time? for yeah. your own gain. And I'll, I'll yield back. Uh, oh, wow, Maddie. great job. Thank you so much. Holy fuck. Well, do we have another one here? Oh, this is a long one. Okay, let's see this one. Hearing going very poorly for TikTok. TikTok CEO. Okay, this is his opening statement. All right, let's hear what he has to say. Two years ago, I became the CEO of TikTok. Today, we have more than a billion monthly active users around the world, mm -hmm. including over 150 million in the United States. Our app is a place where people can be creative and curious, and where close to 5 million American businesses, mostly small businesses, go to find new customers and to fuel their growth. Now, as TikTok has grown, we've tried to learn the lessons of companies that have come before us, especially when it comes to the safety of teenagers. While the vast majority of people on TikTok are over 18, one of, and one of our fastest growing demographics are people over 35. We spent a lot of time. I believe that because all the kids are already on the platform. No, I believe that. It, it, that's, it, that's logical. Because kids are the early adopters and the innovators and the growth of a product stage. And then the kids are the ones that are later on. Or sorry, the, the adults are the ones that are later on. Boomers are joining now. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. It, it's, it's intentionally deceptive, though measures to protect teenagers. Many of those measures are firsts for the social media industry. We, for, we forbid direct messaging for people under 16, and we have a 16-minute watch time by default for those under 18. 
We have a suite of family pairing tools so that parents can participate in their teens' experience and make the choices that are right for their family. I find this to be ridiculous. The idea that the social media platform is responsible for dictating the amount of time that a child looks at, it the app, at, at its app. I find this to be absolutely fucking ridiculous. And I think the idea that parents are trying to put the blame on TikTok whenever they're probably shit parents is ridiculous. And, and, and the thing is, if you don't fucking stand up and say TikTok is responsible for a lot of fucking things, but this is not one of them, this line of thinking will never stop. It won't stop with video games. It won't stop with adults. It won't stop with anything. So it, unless you put your fucking feet on the ground and you say, listen, it is a parent's responsibility at a certain level to dictate how much time their child uses the, the fucking thing that they bought them. It's not TikTok's responsibility to raise kids. This is a joke. And also, like, do you think kids can't get around this? Why can't they just make two accounts? Can't they just use an IP blocker? Why can't they just look at them off, uh, what do you call it, like Google the TikTok and then find it through there and then use the browser version of it? Like, kids know how to do this because they know more about the fucking phone than the parents do. So it, it's just so painful. And, and TikTok knows this. That's why they, they're okay doing it is because they know that it won't actually lower the usage because kids are, kids are smarter than that. But the parents don't know it. So TikTok does this and the parents pat themselves on the back. Meanwhile, the kids watching cutting competitions on TikTok on their fucking VPN. It, it's, it's insane. I'm losing my fucking mind. Why is it that everybody that works in the government can't operate a computer? Fuck! You're arguing against your own point? If you think I'm arguing against my own point, you don't understand my point. Keep listening. Maybe you will. We want TikTok to be a place where teenagers can come to learn which is why we recently launched a feed that exclusively features educational videos about STEM. STEM videos oh already God. have over 116 billion views on TikTok. And I think this TikTok is just like, like, that's so like, how can you say? And the thing is that, uh, what is the proportion of that? How many views does TikTok get as a whole? Do you see what I'm saying? Like TikTok probably gets trillions of views, so 100 billion is like a fucking fraction of a percent. But like the data is presented in a way that makes it look as big as possible. It's like guys that post pictures of their dicks. Like, well, they're gonna try to keep a ruler off the fucking screen. They don't wanna have a ruler on the, on the fucking picture whenever they're posting a picture of their dick. They don't have like a soda can because everybody knows how big a soda can is. Uh, they, they wanna create a forced perspective that makes it look like it's bigger than it is. And everybody knows this down, like this is a personal example, okay? So if people are willing to distort reality to make their dick look bigger, imagine how much they're willing to distort whenever you're talking about a multi-billion dollar company. They always question the numbers they give you and what the numbers they give you don't show. Talk is inspiring a new generation to discover a passion for math and science. That's nice. Now, I would also like to talk about national security concerns that you have raised okay. that we take very, very seriously. Let me start by addressing a few misconceptions about ByteDance, of which we are a subsidiary. ByteDance is not owned or controlled by the Chinese government. It's a private company. 60% of the company is owned by global institutional investors. 20% is owned by the founder and 20% owned by employees around the world. ByteDance has five board members. Three of them are American. Now, TikTok itself is not available in mainland China. We're headquartered in Los Angeles and in Singapore, and we have 7,000 employees in the U.S. today. Still, we have heard important concerns about the... I'm pretty sure that a lot of tech companies that operate in China have to give away a certain amount of their data and information. 
Like that that's my understanding of this. Now I'm not willing to I, I'm not willing to to fucking stand by that because I don't know all of the rules of that. I, I I'm actually not educated enough to like go and be like, yeah, this is 100% true. Like, definitely, like this is it. So, I don't know. However, I think that again, being owned or controlled by the Chinese government does not mean that the Chinese government cannot request access and the company is unable to decline access. It does not imply control, and it does not imply ownership. Potential for unwanted foreign access to U.S. data and potential manipulation of the TikTok mm -hmm. U.S. ecosystem. Our approach has never been to dismiss or trivialize any of these concerns. We have addressed them with real action. Now, that's what we've been doing for the last two years. I will Building also probably say that if I were the guys that make TikTok... I would want to get the fuck out of China because th th they know like these guys aren't stupid. They know that this is, th this is a, this is a ticking time bomb that eventually other countries will ban it. It's constantly a problem and it will get restricted in some way or another. I, I think this will happen. And, and I didn't Mihoyo do this too. Uh, I'm fairly certain that they've tried to uh, separate themselves from China as well. So, I mean, like, think about it like this. They moved. Yeah, they made Hoyoverse. There you go. They, they're shifting to Singapore. So if, if an anime girl video game is doing this, what the fuck do you think TikTok is doing? You see what I'm saying? The, and, and, like, all I'm doing by saying that is, like, I'm just creating... A precedent for it to have occurred in what amounts to a firewall that seals off protected US user data mm -hmm. from unauthorized foreign access the bottom line is this American data stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel by the way um, I want to uh, add in a little uh, little fun fact here is that you know how I think that TikTok should solve the problem of kids uh, getting addicted to these like uh, self harm and like weird trends? They should make it against the rules to have an account if you're under the age of 18. And I think this should apply to all social media websites, including YouTube. Uh, you should not be able to make an account on the platform if you are under the age of 18. Uh, I'm willing to compromise or have a conversation about 16 or 17, but nothing below that for any any reason. There is no reason that a 15-year-old needs to have an account on TikTok. It's easy to lie. Yes, it is. There are a lot of things. It's easy to steal things at Walmart, but they still have people there to stop some people from stealing things from Walmart. It's a it's a method of reduction. Of course, kids are going to do that. Of course, they're like, I mean, how many of you guys were, uh, you know, born in 1900, the year 1900, whenever you went on a porn site for the first time, whenever you were like 11 or 12? I know me and all my friends were. Yeah, of course. There's always going to be a way that people get around the rules. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't have them. We call this initiative Project Texas. That's where Oracle is headquartered. Today, U.S. TikTok data is stored by default in Oracle servers. Only vetted personnel operating in a new company called TikTok U.S. Data Security can control access to this data. Now, additionally, we have plans for this company to report to an independent American board with strong security credentials. Now, there's still some work to do, we have legacy U.S. data sitting in our servers in Virginia and in Singapore. We're deleting those, and we expect that to be complete this year. When that is done, all protected U.S. data will be under the protection of U.S. law and under the control of the U.S.-led security team. This eliminates the concern that some of you have shared with me that TikTok user data can be subject to Chinese law. This goes further, by the way, than what any other company in our industry have done. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if that's true or not. We'll also provide unprecedented transparency and security for the source code for the TikTok. 
so much bullshit. I don't know if it's a cap or not. I'm not just going to call cap on something whenever I don't know if it's cap or not. I don't know. Is he lying or not? I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that what he I think everything that he said is probably true. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other things that are not included in what he's saying that make what he's saying not matter that it's true. Does that make sense? So it's like you're you're uh, intentionally omitting information that makes things more uh, uh, um, like worse. Yeah, they're half truth. Talk app and recommendation engine. Third party validators like Oracle and others will review and validate our source code and algorithms. This will help ensure the integrity of the code that powers what Americans see on our app. We will further provide access to researchers, which helps them study and monitor our content ecosystem. Now, we believe we are the only, the only company that offers this level of transparency. Now, trust is about actions we take. We have to earn that trust with decisions we make for our company and our products. The potential security, privacy, content manipulation concerns raised about TikTok are really not unique to us. The same issues apply to other companies. We believe what's needed are clear, transparent rules that apply broadly to all tech companies. Ownership is not... I agree with him. I actually totally agree with him. He's completely right. Because the truth is people kill themselves over... Like, before TikTok existed, people still killed themselves over social media. It's not like TikTok got invented and all the kids started dying. This has been happening for 10 years. At the core of addressing these concerns. Now, as I conclude, there are more than 150 million Americans who love our platform. And we know we have a responsibility to protect them, which is why I'm, I'm making the following commitments to you and to all our users. Number one, we will keep safety, particularly for teenagers, as a top priority for us. Number two, we will. Then why do you let them live stream? Like, uh, I, I mean, like, come on. Firewall protected U.S. data from unwanted foreign access. Number three, you can't live stream from TikTok the right will remain okay, a place for free expression one. and will not be manipulated by any government. And fourth, we will be transparent and we will give access to third-party independent monitors to remain accountable for our commitments. I'll be grateful for any feedback that you have, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Okay. So overall, uh, the transparency and everything like that, uh, like I, I, I'm not really going to believe somebody whenever they're talking about transparency, whenever the only data that they provided is intentionally created in a way to make people think something that's not true, that is true. Like the STEM thing, I, I always operate by the principle of if one thing is rotten, it all is. So uh, the moment that I hear one thing that's a lie, like I, I will still go through it. But I will operate from the pretense that any sort of, what's the word, uh, any sort of like where, where you're trying to say and make a statement based on your integrity will be automatically in the garbage. The moment that you intentionally try to mislead people. Every website tracks your shit. If you have a problem with TikTok, you have a problem with Google. Yeah, and, and I think that's a very good point. And, and this is kind of what I'm getting at is that. I believe that any of these uh, any of these platforms have this issue. This is not something that's unique to TikTok. And I think if you want to make an argument that TikTok is somehow a uh, is a problem because it's Chinese owned, uh, again, Riot is Chinese owned. And whenever I see this this energy for Riot as well, then maybe I'll start taking people's energy seriously. But right now, what this seems like, it seems like. Uh, uh, it, it seems like sensationalism. It seems like like this is almost kind of what happened in, I would say, like 2000 and, and like 2000 and two, 2000, really, to like 2008 with like video games, like violent video games, like a violent music 
and, and like violent movies and like TV shows is that everybody kept trying to pin it on them over and over and over. And I see this same thing happening now with social media. And, and I, I don't entirely disagree, but I think that I, I, mo I like 80% disagree somewhere around there. So let's go back. I'm going to read a few more of these and uh, I'll, I'll read some people's comments and, and then we'll move on. Uh, I, I, I have a lot to say about this. I apologize if it's taking too long. Uh, it's way different uh, than Chinese video game and Chinese platforms. What they do, it's completely different. Uh, this is way different than Chinese video game and Chinese platform. Oh, oh, a Chinese video game versus a Chinese platform and what they do. A completely different L take. So I don't think it is different. And the reason why it's not different is because both of them process payment information and personal information. Like your address, your first and last name, your phone number. All of these things and all of this data is owned by TikTok and also by Riot. So I, I actually don't think that's true. Now, the effect could be different. Absolutely. You're right about that. But functionally, they're, they're storing a lot of the same data. Google censors uh, per American government and can't control the narrative on TikTok. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I think TikTok probably follows the American narrative pretty well because they don't want to ruffle any feathers too. Like, let's be honest, just operating in their own best interest, they would follow the American narrative because they don't want to attract more attention like this. Anything like this is bad for TikTok. Uh, TikTok algorithm and recommendations are not similar to a video game. That's a completely separate problem. So the problem with, with it being Chinese owned, I think is a problem in regards to data compromise, data being compromised. The problems with uh, content recommendations are not unique to it being a Chinese platform. These are problems that exist on all social media platforms. But whenever you talk about the problems that TikTok has as being an extension of potentially the Chinese government, that is a problem that has to do with data security. So you're talking about two separate problems. So that, that's why you're wrong. Uh, next. Oh, if this seems baseless. Why don't the government audit them? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I think there's a lot, a lot more to it. Social media platforms usually collect far more details than payment info. info. Well, I'm not saying that they don't. But I think that payment info is enough. Like, I would say phone number, first and last name, and address... I wouldn't want all that stuff just being sent out to the Chinese government. I, I think that's enough. That, that, that is problematic fundamentally. Like you don't need to go even farther than that. Yes, the, going farther than that makes it worse. But it, in my mind, it's already crossed the threshold of being bad. Uh, why can China ban whatever they want, but whenever other people do it to them, it's not okay? Well, these people are saying they're not China. And why can they do that? Because it's beneficial for them. Uh, they're not operating under a moral principle. They're operating under self-interest. That's common sense. What's the uh, risk of China having that kind of data, uh, though? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's like a lot of different ways that they could use it. I have no idea. Uh, I mean, there's a million different things. Do you know your Discord has two-factor authentication and email number as well? It's owned by a big, uh, a big part by Tencent, a.k.a. China. Well, and, and this is kind of what I was talking about, is that it's not something that is exclusive to TikTok. This is my whole point, is that the problems that people are raising with TikTok exist with other companies as well. And think of China and Edge over us is bad. Um, that's fine. But anyway, I think that there are two main issues here. So let me, let me talk about them basically. Is that the first issue is, is TikTok owned by China and is TikTok subservient to the Chinese government? I don't know the answer to that. I'm not sure. So it's like, if it is, then it could be problematic. But if that is problematic, then I think we should address a lot more companies and not just TikTok, okay? So that, that's where I'm at with that topic. And with the second topic, is TikTok promoting and profiting and benefiting from uh, pushing data and videos that are harmful to people? Yes, they are. How much are they doing to stop that? How transparent are they being in trying to stop that? 
probably not very. Garma, is there a business in China? Yeah, exactly. And so no more than any other social media platform. I do think that TikTok has a different type of responsibility because it has a majority uh, younger audience. Like, uh, you know, LinkedIn and TikTok, I would have two different perspectives on like content moderation on those two platforms and what's okay and what's not okay to talk about. And I'm not saying that this is something that I would like legislate in a way, but I do think that functionally they are, they are different. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not saying that, like, this is something that you should legislate, to, oh, because you have this percentage of, like, kids using it, then it should be different for you. But I'm just saying that if we're talking about this honestly, the reason why TikTok is a bigger problem is because there are a lot more kids that use TikTok and kids are, you know, stupid. I think the solution to all of this is to, not all of this, but a lot of it is to not allow people that are under 18 to make an account on a social media platform. I see no value in a 15 year old, a 14 year old having an Instagram account, having a Facebook account, having a Twitter account, or having a TikTok account. I think that this is a net negative. And while I did enjoy social media as a kid, I had MySpace, I was 14 years old, I got on social media, okay, as fast as I could. That does not necessarily mean that it's good. So yeah, uh, do you uh, support more intrusive ID laws for accounts? Uh, more intrusive ID laws for accounts. I don't know if I do or not. I'd have to really think about that. I'd look and see how kind of how Korea is doing things. Uh, I would look and see how uh, how these companies could use them, uh, what the uh, what the oversight of the government is over that. Uh, what the extent of that ID is, how much data is stored in that ID, if it's a binary pat like check to where like okay you're 18 you're fine you're not you're not 18 you're not fine, uh, I don't know. Uh, I would definitely look into it. I, I think that like the first place that I would start with that would be live streaming. Would it be better for TikTok if users had to submit an ID before live streaming in the same way that they do on Chatterbait? Would that be better for the country? I find a very, it is a very hard argument to say no. It is an extremely hard argument for, for me to say, no, it would not be better. Or sorry, uh, yes, it would be better. Or wait, fuck. I, I mean, I, fuck. I, I, sorry, I'm like, I'm just, it, it's late. I've had a long day. I would support, I would support that. Somebody having to submit an ID. Does that make sense? Good chat. Uh, what's the serve user dumb tooth faults on? Ask about, are you mad? What, let's read. Uh, what, what, let's read a, a detractor here. Why not? Uh, um, you don't know shit. Uh, nothing to say. Illiterate. Don't know shit about politics. Imagine listening. He won. That's why we have TikTok. I'm going to Twitch nerd about politics. You can't eat fruit, bruh. You are 12. Someone, his mom provides everything for I, I, I'm sorry to say, but that's not the case. You're dumb as hell. You were dumb as fucking hell. It's an alt account? Yeah, I know. Uh, fuck this dude. He's just stupid. Like, that. that's all there is to it. I mean, people like that... The thing is that there's always a lot of people that will tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about, but the moment that you actually look at what I don't know that I'm talking about, it immediately is dispersed. Because they're actually just disagreeing with me, and they're just saying I don't know what I'm talking about because they don't want to hear what I'm saying. They have no actual argument because I'm right. Yeah, I just brain damage chatter. An ID law would get rid of chatters like that? True. Yeah, well, he's not live streaming. Uh, in Germany, we have laws uh, that sites hosted in Germany, like Gamble or other 18 plus websites, need ID no matter what, or your site gets shut down. Uh, there was never an issue with that. Yeah, I mean, Germany is a different place than America, and I'd have to really think about what the effects of that are. But I can't see a problem. I, I think it would be a net positive if TikTok required an ID to live stream. 
I, I do think that would be a net positive. I can't imagine that being a net negative. Mm. Does Twitch? Uh, I think that there's a conversation for that too. I think obviously for TikTok, I would talk about that one first because um, there's a lot of kids on there. But yeah, maybe for Twitch too. A lot of platforms would be so much better if accounts always show someone's address. Well, that, that's a bit much, but um, I, I think especially for live streaming and creating content. Uh, but there's a difference between having to give an ID for gambling than giving an ID for Instagram. Well, I'm not really talking about giving an ID for Instagram. I'm talking about giving an ID for live streaming. I never said that. I never said you would have to give an ID to use Instagram. Let's see here. Everyone is talking about rioting and starting a revolution if TikTok gets banned. Zach, this is intense. You need to see the whole hearing before siding with Congress on this. Nobody's going to riot if TikTok gets banned. It's just a bunch of kids that are going to be mad for a week. Fine, got shut down. There weren't any riots. What do you think is going to fucking happen? What, like a bunch of middle schoolers aren't going to show up to math class? It's not going to be a riot if they get rid of TikTok. Are you kidding me? Are you insane? Absolutely not. You'd be fucking delusional. People would just go to another platform instantaneously. They'd go to YouTube Shorts or Instagram, and that would be it. Twitch streamers, because they have a big audience in Germany, need TV licenses and youth protection officer. Was a big thing here. Yep, I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Uh, but I'm just saying that some of the things do make sense. People already double dip on TikTok and, ins and YouTube Shorts, for sure. Uh, calm down, Chad. Didn't read the whole message. It was to prove personal information is shown. When personal information is shown, people online would behave differently. Uh, I don't see any positive benefit of allowing people to see the personal information of other users. Like in, in any sort of private information, like phone number, address, last name, phone, like anything like that. Like there's no benefit to another user being able to access that information. Let's see here. Uh, let's see if there's any more of these. Let's read a few more. Joining us now is FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr. Commissioner, it's great to have you, especially because you've been move on. one of the leading voices, certainly on the regulatory front, talking about TikTok, you say, as a surveillance tool. What have you heard from the CEO today? Yeah, I think this hearing is going uh, very poorly for TikTok. And I, and I say that trying to grade on a curve. Obviously, they were in the hole going into this. There was a deficit of trust. They were going into it losing. Like, they're, they're losing no matter what. It's just about how much they lose. But I think things are continuing to move uh, in the wrong direction, and there's been some early stumbles in this hearing so far. We'll see if TikTok can recover. This morning, for instance, there was a, a story out where TikTok testified in their written testimony that they cited this uh, citizen lab study as evidence that they're not sending data back to China. And the authors of that study came out and said, that's not at all what our study found. And we've told you repeatedly not to cite to our study. And what we're seeing in the hearing, as we talked about, was really bipartisan interest where Republicans and Democrats are building on each other on some really tough questions for TikTok. But what does it amount to, Commissioner? What is actually the option for Congress or for the White House to ban, to ban it. The Trump administration has tried. There are some legal complications. Yeah, look, I think one of the most significant points on that in the hearing so far is you had Democrat uh, ranking member Pallone take square on this Project Texas idea that TikTok had been trying to sell to the U.S. government as an alternative to a ban or a divestiture. And Pallone said basically uh, that he doesn't have a lot of confidence in Project Texas. So I think that is a unique development from this hearing. And frankly, that reinforces what we're seeing out of the White House. You had reports just a week or so ago that said that they're going to TikTok and asking for... Uh, I also wonder how many of these people that are against TikTok have received campaign contributions from people at or involved with or the company itself of things like Instagram, uh, Facebook. I, I think they're kind of the same thing. Uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and uh, these other platforms. The majority of them, Meta, yeah. So it, it, it's, I, I can't believe we have to even ask that question. It's so insane to me. A divestiture or they might face a possible ban. So I think one news piece out of this is 
uh, decreasing confidence that Project Texas can solve that. And again, I think that puts us where we started, which really is <clears throat> a ban or divestiture. Uh, we've done divestitures before. There was an app grinder that had Beijing-based interests. We required the divestiture of that. Uh, there was the action, as you know, in the Trump he administration. He smiles a little bit whenever he says it. Administration to ban TikTok. It ran into some legal troubles. But in the three years since then, we now have a tremendous number of red flags that make the legal case for a ban much stronger. Sure, no doubt. Let's see here. Um, are there any more of these? I think that these are... This, this is about it, right? I mean, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not missing anything else. Oh, okay, all right. Well, what? this will be the last one. And uh, then uh, we're going to move on to something else. Here we go. What's the main reason they're going out after it? It's a harmful challenge shit kids are doing and dying or what? Uh, the reason why is that it's definitely a conversation. TikTok is the, it's probably the most used social media by kids. And I think there's a lot of evidence that like TikTok doesn't do enough to protect kids from harmful trends on the platform. So that's the main reason. And I think also it's the new one. It's the new one. It's grown really fast. It's super popular. So everybody is talking about it. It's the same as like how World of Warcraft was like the main game that was ruining people's lives in 2004, 2005. But the truth is that people were ruining their lives with other games before then. It's just that because WoW was so popular, it put a bigger microscope on it. It's kind of a boring answer, but yeah. It's not like some crazy shit happened. Chair Rogers, Ranking Member Pallone, members of the committee, thank you for your time. I am Sho Chu, okay. and I'm from Singapore. That's where I was born. That's where my parents are. There's 50 million in the United States. Our app is a place where people can be creative. Okay, so I've already seen this. Never mind. Okay. Back. Gentleman from Texas. Chair recognizes for five minutes, Mr. Crenshaw. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chu, for uh, bringing Republicans and Democrats together. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, I want to get right to the critical point of concern. So TikTok is able to collect massive amounts of personal data. We all know that. That means it could, if it desired to, use this data to influence narratives and trends, create misinformation campaigns, yep. encourage self-destructive behavior, Purposely allow drug cartels to communicate freely and organize human... Yeah, this guy's from Texas, by the way. This this is our guy. Drug trafficking. And to be fair, all social media companies could do that. But here's the difference. It is only TikTok that is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. All these other social media companies are not. Mr. Chu, do you agree that TikTok is controlled by the CCP? No. Okay, I thought you'd say that. I disagree, as you thought I might say. Um, here's why I disagree. Your, your parent company is ByteDance, right? That's correct. It is correct. So, many of the workers who work at ByteDance, they're Communist Party members, right? I, I wouldn't know. Well, ex well, I think, for example, the, the chief editor at ByteDance, Zhang Ping, is the Communist Party secretary, correct? He works on the Chinese business, not on TikTok. Right. He works for ByteDance. The parent he works company. on the Chinese business. Right. The parent company of TikTok. The Chinese business is uh, called Douyin. Yeah, but it's all associated with ByteDance, right? Um, so ByteDance... associated with ByteDance, right? Why is it wagging? Um, so ByteDance owns a number of businesses. Right. They are you all report to ByteDance. Everybody's part of ByteDance, okay? And do, do you know of any other employees that work for ByteDance that are part of the Chinese Communist Party? Like I said, you know, they are... ByteDance has owns Chinese businesses and they operate in China. You don't know how many, but you acknowledge many must be card carrying members of the CCP, right? They're in the Chinese business, yes. I mean, yeah, I mean, the CCP holds a what's called a golden share in ByteDance that allows the CCP to control one board seat in ByteDance. That's publicly That's reported. not correct. It's not it's correct. Not, it's no, been it's publicly correct. reported. It they admitted to it. Is is you can uh, on our website we have updated it so we have can give people more transparent information right. on this. They have a share in a subsidiary that is only for the Chinese business. It has nothing to do with TikTok. And okay. it's for the purposes of content licensing in China. So there, there's not an internal CCP committee, which is a, a regular thing that happens in China. They have a CCP committee internally inside the company. 
I, I run TikTok. I, I cannot represent Byte the Chinese dance. business. Talking about ByteDance. No arrangement in ByteDance. So uh, again, here's, 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 I think that it's deceptive to say that, I mean, the parent company clearly it will be able to make certain decisions. I mean, like, yeah, I would assume so. Sure. I mean, does that mean that it's subservient to the Chinese government? It's hard to say. The main point of concern, China's 2017 national intelligence law states very clearly that, quote, any organization or citizen shall support. A ci somebody said somebody said in chat um, asking questions about the parent company that this man doesn't work for. Exactly. So, like, that's exactly right. Whenever the parent company can make calls that go over his head. Then, like, what the fuck does it matter what he says? Oh, TikTok doesn't do this. Okay, well, ByteDance does. So it doesn't matter. What the hell is this? Oh, it's not working? Oh, there we go. ...and cooperate with state intelligence work in accordance with the law and maintain the secrecy of all knowledge of state intelligence work. In other words, ByteDance and also your TikTok employees that live in China, they must cooperate with Chinese intelligence whenever they are called upon. And if they are called upon, they're bound to secrecy. That would include you. So, Mr. Chu, if the CCP tells ByteDance to turn over all data that TikTok has collected inside the U.S., even within Project Texas, do they have to do so, according to the Chinese law? Con Congressman, first, I'm, I'm Singaporean. Um, That's fine, yeah. but there are employees of yours and bite dancers in China. We, we understand this concern. In my opening statement, we said, we hear these concerns, we didn't try to avoid them or you know, trivialize them. We built something where we take that data and put it out of reach. This is what we did. We put it out of reach. Out of reach, but they own you. No, we put it out of reach by bite storing dance, them. ByteDance owns TikTok. If ByteDance is told, and, and the CCP owns ByteDance because the CCP, CCP owns everybody in China. And so we, by law, they can make them do whatever they want. And they say that by law, you can't tell anyone about it. So they can make you hand over that data. Is that correct? The data is stored here in American soil by an American well, company. You say that. Overseen we, by American we thought personnel. that, but leaked audio from 80 internal TikTok meetings shows that U.S. user data has been repeatedly accessed from China when you said it hasn't been. And here's the other thing, following back on my... my, my, my that is pretty bad. Uh, I, I mean, that, yeah. We don't need, yeah, it's... <laughs> The recording, yeah, exactly. It's supposed to be funny. I mean, it, it seems very, very bad. This guy's doing a much better job than uh, the other two. Colleagues' line of questioning. In your own privacy policy, it says that you may share information within your so-called corporate group. Is ByteDance part of that corporate group? If you're talking about this, the share of the, the entity with, right. the, with the share, I, like I shared so with is, uh, the previous... Um, is ByteDance part of the corporate group? ByteDance as a holding company is, is part of the corporate group, yes. It's part of the corporate group. Yeah. Okay, so your own privacy policy says you have to share data with ByteDance. And if the CCP says, hey, ByteDance, you're going to do what we say, and you can't tell anyone about it because by law, according to that 2017 uh, national intelligence law, they have to do it. That's our concern. Maybe That's, you haven't done it yet, but my point is why that you might have this. to. And that's where our concerns come from. I mean, over, over 300 TikTok employees have worked for China's state-run propaganda media. That's just from looking at their LinkedIn profiles. Well, I mean, of course, because a lot of people work for the Chinese government over there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, he's constantly saying if, if you, uh, you can't make assumptions. I feel like, I, I don't know, like, let me, let me just think this one out here. Uh, I feel like if ByteDance owns TikTok and they're able to tell TikTok what to do, then they're able to tell TikTok what to do about what they do with their smaller companies because they own TikTok and by extension, they own the smaller companies. That's just how it works. It's like a multi-level marketing scheme. So I, I can't see how this is, this doesn't have them dead to rights. Yeah, that's how a company works. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so here, and, and my last point is this. I want to say this to all the teenagers out there and, and TikTok influencers who think we're just old and out of touch and don't know what we're talking about, trying to take away your favorite app. Yeah. You may not care that your data is being accessed now, but it will be one day when you do care about it. And here's the real problem. With data comes power. 
They can choose what you see and how you see it. They can make you believe things that are not true. They can encourage you to engage in behavior that will destroy your life. Even if it That's is not true. happening He's yet, right. it could in the future. The He's long-term right. goal of the Chinese Communist Party is the demise of the American power, and that starts with our youth. At any moment- I disagree that this is something that's exclusive to China. And I think that it's something that's just exclusive to any of these social media platforms. Because it's in their best interest to create as much discord as possible. Because discord creates more discourse. And that's what they make their money on. They could demand that all of TikTok's data be used to design an AI algorithm with the sole purpose of promoting Chinese interests and destroying our society from within. You want to know why that's Democrat? Why that's why Democrats and Republicans have come together on this? That's why we are so concerned. Thank you, and I yield back. Well, shit. They should just let him talk the whole time. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> like it's it's annoying because like this guy, it seems like he kind of knows what's going on. And yeah, he's yeah, it was he was at the last. Oh yeah, maybe it was. Yeah, man, slams a dick on the table. Yeah, exactly. Ten cent next. Oh, absolutely. It's good to see that. Texas man doing Texas things. Yeah, true brother. Uh uh, yeah, there it is. So it's okay for American to pay uh, under minimum wage uh, in in China, but not China policing app company. Uh, well, I don't really give a fuck about that. And you have to always remember, like, I'm not a um. Uh, I, I'm not one of these uh, idealists, okay? I think that a lot of these cases are just simply people acting in their best interest. It has nothing to do with, like, consistency. People will do something bad when it benefits them and cry about it when it doesn't. It's that simple. Ah. <sighs> What about is my can't? I think what about ism is used um, sometimes too much. Uh, it, it depends on, on what the case is, but I think that it's fair for people to be talking about TikTok. However, uh, I think that also other platforms and you know other social media websites should should face this same type of criticism. The only criticism here that's unique to TikTok is their relationship with China. Everything else is completely universal with any other platform. Chinese government are an ar Chinese companies are the arm of the government. They are controlled. American companies are not state sponsored. Well, they could still cooperate with the government as well. Uh, you know, you, there's. It doesn't mean that just because a company doesn't legally have to report to the government doesn't mean that it won't. So it, there. Like, yes, but no. Uh, anyway, so... I, I don't know if TikTok should be banned or not. What, what I do know is that... I think any time that you have a... Social media platform... There is no value to allowing kids on the platform. There is no value to allowing anybody under 18... Or whatever the age of consent is... Of being an adult... In your mind... Uh, there is no value in that. And if you're not 18 or 16 or 17 debatable, uh, I don't think you should be able to make an account. This is already a law, by the way. It's already a law, and that's why Twitch bans you if you say that you're a kid. Uh, like, you're really young. One of my longtime viewers said that, and he actually got instant banned by Twitch automatically. And he still hasn't gotten his account back. And he had his account for like seven years. Twitch insta banned him. So whenever you say that type of stuff, uh, value for companies is huge. That's why they do it. Oh, of course. But like what I'm saying is, um, uh, companies like this, they do want to, uh, uh, they they do they do benefit. They make a lot of money off of kids being on the platform. But I think that it's a bad thing for the society. Does that make sense? So, like, of course it's good for TikTok if kids use the platform, but is it good for the, the country if kids use TikTok? Probably not. But I don't think that's something unique to TikTok. I don't think it's good for the country if kids use Instagram either. Or Facebook or Twitter. Is Twitch a bad thing for society? 
Uh, I think it could be, but I think also like the line I would draw, because you can't prevent a kid from accessing a website, right? I mean, like, of course not. But you can definitely prevent them from making an account. You can definitely do that.